Carolina. And this morning, we are privileged to have two national union leaders with us today. So we want to have a few words from them before they go on and rally some more troops around the state. So it is my honor that we have Randy Weingarten, president of the American uh, Federation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Randy is a champion for all working families and especially for educators and students. So brothers and sisters, please welcome a leading advocate for public education and for justice in the workplace, Randy Martin. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yes. You know, um, this guy and I, our offices abut each other in, uh, I didn't say butt each other, I said abut each other in Washington. We almost never see each other because we're almost never in Washington at the same time. Um, it's every single time I go through TSA, I thank a TSA worker because, you know, when I think about all the kind of organizing AF AFG has done, um, I think about, I just said to Jay David, the best picture I now have in my office is at the AFGE convention where you had all the kids of members walk me in. I'll never, I was so moved by that, I'll never forget that. And the reason I'm saying all this in terms of North Carolina and also in terms of J. David is that all of us um, have each other's back. And Amen. so, you know, this is, I, I know how tough this turf is. And you have done an unbelievable job keeping everybody in the game. And it's just, and, and so we feel that we need to not just be in places that we're strong, but we need to actually say thank you in places where you are basically the kind of Sisyphus pushing that rock up the, um, up the mountain. And that's why I really wanted to be here. We're going to spend some time with Reverend Barber, so we're not, you know, going to the big Obama rallies or Hillary rallies. We want to spend time actually helping. And we did the same thing in Las Vegas. I was with uh, um, D. Taylor and the Unite Here folks last week, um, and we're, you know, we um, Lily Eskelson Garcia from NEA and uh, Lee Saunders from ASME and I did a whole bunch of things together um, in Florida last weekend because, you know, at the end of the day, we are stronger together. But there are places that to be stronger together, we need to help hold the line. And North Carolina is one of them. He cannot win if he loses North Carolina. That's right. Amen. That's right. Amen, sister. He cannot That's win right. if he loses North Carolina. Amen. And you have, you know, you, you know the stakes far better than I do in terms of what's going on with Roy Cooper and your current governor. You know the stakes between Burr and Deborah Ross. Um, and, and so let me just say a couple of words about Hillary, who I have known for 25 years. Um, I'm stunned that this election is this close. And I'm, stun and I'm stunned for the following reason. The, you put these two people up mm -hmm. against each other. Mm -hmm. It is the difference between night and day. I, I am really glad that Bill Weld, who's not a Democrat, who was a Republican governor of Massachusetts <coughs> and on the Libertarian line, Finally, as someone who's not a Democrat said, wait a second, she is honest, trustworthy, and equipped. I'm going to vouch for her. This is he his words, yeah. not mine, because she is equipped to be president, and she has the qualifications. This is Bill, Bill Weld who said that. And our politics have gotten so poisoned that, that even somebody, look, you notice Hillary is not going after the Bushes. She's not going after 
people from before. She wants to bring people together. Even George W. Bush, I understand, is whispering that he's going to vote for her. Amen. Because at the end of the day, right. think about he it. He should speak up. It's about the democracy. You put these two people up. It's, it's not any more even the bigotry. I mean, the guy said a few weeks ago, we're going to racially profile, you know, African Americans in this country. So he then, you know, he then put that on top of calling Mexicans rapists, call, saying that we're going to deport all Muslims. David Duke and the white supremacists have yeah. been unleashed in terms yeah. of what they're doing to support him. So, and then everything that he's done in terms of the cruelty, not just the misogyny, in terms of the assaulted behavior with women. So let's just check off all the different ways we would never want anybody like that to be the president of the United States of America. But on top of any of that, on top of what he has unleashed in kids all across America, we now call it the Trump effect, on top of the bigotry and the hate that he has unleashed, the guy has no idea how to be a president. The danger of him having his hands on a nuclear code is astonishing. And his temperament that he just goes after and retaliates against anybody who doesn't treat him as King Trump, what the hell is he going to do with foreign leaders, maybe with the exception of Putin, who will then have him, already has him tied up in a string, what else is he going to do? So you say to yourself, what is going on that people don't see it? And I think exactly right. Exactly right. And that's why, because the country is going through its own issues about whether we can actually elect the most qualified person to run for president in my lifetime and can we elect her because she's a woman? Mm -hmm. In some ways, in spite of the fact she's a woman. Mm -hmm. and, and that's what's going on. Because the level of anger, the level of outrage, Donald Trump doesn't pay his taxes. We just saw that in the last couple of days, he clearly violated the law, not just morality. And how many other ways has he violated laws? All of that is justifiable. But she made one mistake in her life, which is a pimple compared to everything else that's going on and for which she has apologized. And for the FBI, as when she is getting her sea legs and we are about to have a landslide that would sweep in the Senate and the Supreme Court for us, the FBI putting their fingers on the scale, having no evidence yet as a lawyer. If you do not have the subpoena for the computer, how the hell do you even know what's on that computer? Mm. Defying years, shocking, decades of precedent. And now you see the little war that's going on in terms of the FBI and how they have clearly taken sides. Shocking. So it leads to this. Do we want hope versus fear? Aspiration versus anger? Respect, tolerance versus bigotry and hate? It's not even about the fact that he's going to decimate public education versus her, will, her wanting to invest. It's not even that he's going to decimate our, our, our movement and lie about where he buys his steel versus having someone who has our back and wants the labor movement to grow. It's not even these issues anymore. It's not even lifting wages and, 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 and uh, lowering childcare costs and lowering you know, um, student debt. It's really now about the country and our soul. And the reason I wanted to stop by is I can say as much as I can to lots of different people. We had 180,000 of our members on a phone call just Tuesday in terms of get out the vote. 
but in terms of North Carolina, you're hilarious. Your conversations with your colleagues, your friends, your communities, that's what pierces the anger. That's what gets people out to vote. And so I just want to end by saying I'm so appreciative of the work you're doing. It's really hard work, particularly in this environment. And really, thank you, thank you, thank you for doing it. You are doing the work we need to do to save our country. Thank you. Thank you. Also really pleased to welcome back home David Daycox, uh, President of the American Federation of Government.